Hi, I'm great. How are you? Good. Should I call you Sai? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thank you for asking me today. Thanks for accepting my request and uh, accepting to talk with me. Sure. So, what time is it there? It's uh 10:28 p.m. here in India, South India. Nice. And the weather? Weather is uh 20 plus Celsius. Yeah. Okay, I was going to say 20. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Used to Fahrenheit. So, that's still good. 20 is good Celsius. So, uh I thought to introduce you to my audience. So, can you introduce yourself to my audience? Sure. So, my name is Kimberly McKay. I'm a published author. I've been writing for over 10 years. I'm also a repped screenwriter, which means I have an agent. that shops my screenplays out to the film industry. Uh there are four under contract as far as screenplays and I've got 4 5 6 7 8 8 books with a ninth on the way um first of 2021. So just just a little bit of work there to share with the world. Okay, so I I came to know by seeing your profile that uh, you are rep and uh, multi-channel author, screenwriter, podcaster, OU instructor, marine brat, John 316 is 34 is for real a novel thought. Yes. Yes. Um John 316 being the Bible verse, um obviously I'm Christian, but my books are kind of they're Christian literature, but they're not Christian literature in the sense that they are clean they're clean romances there's nothing shoved in anyone's face with the exception of one book as far as pushing a message um so pastors either really love me or hate me because my books might have a swear word or people struggle with sin or you know someone may come close to doing something that sh- they shouldn't be doing so you know i write about people that jesus sat at the table with not about the people that are holier than thou so um i write about broken people and that's what my heart is led to do because we're all human and we all have flaws and that's the beauty of being here right correct and that's the beauty of grace too so that we can be who we are and strive for better in our lives because there's a deeper message there does that make sense yeah i got you yeah so uh can you tell me about each and everything uh, each and every uh, word that you said uh, on your profile in detail <laughs> So on the profile, yes. So I'm a podcaster because I have a lot of friends that do a lot of interesting things. I've got some friends in the entertainment industry, um actors that are actually I don't know if you've heard of the Queen's Gambit or not, but one of my friends, it's a Netflix uh film that's just released not too long ago that in the US it's trending and I think in Europe it is. I don't know about India, but if you haven't heard of the Queen's Gambit yet on Netflix, you should go look it up. But one of my friends acts in that, and so he's also been somebody I've interviewed on my podcast called A Novel Thought. And A Novel Thought primarily focuses on people that have something to do in the entertainment, writing, military, broadcasting, whatever industry they're in, it kind of all ties back to reading and writing because they may have a little hand in a publishing aspect, but basically is anyone that's doing something new because novel means new as well as being a novel as far as a book does that make sense okay and so i choose people that are uplifting that have something to contribute to the world that are doing something new um as far as teaching at ou i help people with their writing the students i uh work with their broadcast students they want to be journalists and pr majors and they want to go work in advertising and so i help them with their writing and it's a very extensive course and it's very strenuous um it's a lot of information packed in a semester and by the time it's done they're glad to be done with it and then i've just been writing since i was a child so i started thinking about getting published 11 years ago and Well, I'm dead. So that's pretty much and I'm a marine brat. My dad's had a 30-year Marine Corps uh career. He's traveled we, all over the world with his duty stations. So I've lived in places like Asia, you know, Hawaii, Washington DC, all over the US, but I've never been to Europe and I've never been to India. Okay. Does that so, help answer your question? That's a lot. Yeah, I think uh, I I asked you to tell in detail, but you said in a short time but if you want me to ask questions about what you said uh, i will ask or else uh, you can tell uh, uh, more about yourself to the sure world. yeah so can you repeat that again one more time 
uh i understood what you said uh, but uh, uh can you can you tell more in detail about uh, yourself uh, because your your profile description says a lot about you it does say a lot um so as far as writing would you like to know more about the writing the different books okay yeah um started with finding kylie the forgiveness series there's four books in those uh, i have a standalone novel called second chances and then most recently i'll show you these um i released the the spiritual gift series you can see a couple of them behind my back the one you can't see is the one in the middle it's this one dangerous visions and they're paranormal romance they uh they focus on the spiritual aspect of things because we all have a spirit we all have a soul and so there's a lot of um there's a lot in those books that deals with that thin realm between heaven and earth okay is uh, is there's uh it is about spiritual romance yeah paranormal romance fantasy um romantic suspense okay and i wouldn't say it's a spiritual romance because it's not a romance between like a ghost and a person they're all heavenly relationships but they may have a little help from beyond does that make sense okay so i think this is this is deep a little bit okay. a little bit dangerous I, dangerous visions Okay. Yeah. What were you gonna, what were you going to say, Sai? <laughs> yeah, actually I'm waiting, uh, you know, you're going to you're going to say about uh, more about it. So it's, the series starts with endless possibilities and it's basically um a grandmother dies at the beginning of the story and it's a pretty brutal death, but as she passes on, she leaves behind a family mystery. secrets that can come back to haunt her family and put them in danger so she has to help them solve the mystery to to make sure that her granddaughter ends up with the man she should end up with so that's the first book the second okay. book from the grandson's point of view he's a a CIA agent and he's involved in a different faction of the CIA and off the books agency called Odyssey and he has to save someone and he has these um i wouldn't say psychic visions but he has these visions that he's blessed with after an accident after he comes back from a coma and these visions help him stay one step ahead of danger for the most part there's a few people that catch up to them and they have to figure out how to escape the danger themselves without these visions and then the third one is more of a blind instincts it's the partner of the brother from the second book and this partner just has gut instincts he just knows um thinks sometimes but he ends up getting amnesia and he doesn't remember who he is so he has to rely on his instincts to find himself and to find love so all are fic- fictional books all fiction yes okay all are interconnected all are interconnected but they can be read alone you don't have to read the first one to get to the second or the third and now the fourth one coming out in april okay so what made you to write about uh, this something which is not real because i've always been a storyteller in my head from the time i could remember i was 2 years old drawing with crayons and these stories are just coming in and and i was just drawing pictures but to me they were stories and they were characters and things that were happening on the page and then i remember there's a picture my parents have of me at a typewriter when i was 3 and i'm pounding on that typewriter old school with a bathing suit and a big hat it's a big floppy hat and i'm just typing away and i can't spell at that point in my life it's just a bunch of syntax a bunch of characters on a page letters symbols but to me it was a dramatic rise and a dramatic fall and a very intriguing beginning because i had this story that i was punching out in my head but nobody else could read it so <laughs> I wrote my first book in the 4th grade. Um my teacher turned it into a pro into a educational system contest and it won best author. Um so that is when I realized, you know what? This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Okay. So you said uh, in the beginning that uh, you wrote a book uh, uh which contains uh, uh romance and uh, which will be in between uh, uh non-living things. The romance will be between non-living things. The romance are between humans on the earth, but they get a little help from heavenly guidance here and there. Okay. They get little nudges. Okay. And uh, you didn't use a, a single swear word in that. Not in that one. Not that I can remember. Nice. I typically stay away from those. But 
if a character is a rough around the character, rough around the edges type of person, I have to okay. stay true to who they are, and I won't ever use any graphic words. I may use the word hell, or I may start with, you know, you can cut someone off, like you little, and then you can start with a letter, and then you can cut them off with somebody else's context. Okay. Okay. I may go there, but there's nothing ever really graphic. How many words you have used in that book? And endless possibilities? Yes. How many words total is it? Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. I've written so many, I can't keep track of how many words are each. They usually vary between 40,000 and 60,000 words per book, if I had to guess. So, I'm a little ADD. Yeah. Do, you know what, do you know what ADD is? No. So attention deficit disorder. I've never been diagnosed, but I lovingly tell myself that I'm a little ADD, which means, you know, you can be focusing on something and the smallest thing in the background can catch your attention and then your attention is diverted, right? Yeah. We all have this short syndrome of attention it's called yes. ADD. And I think we're all, as adults with the electronics that we have, I think we all are ADD. We just aren't diagnosed. I write for the reader who's ADD. My chapters are short and easy. And then once you're done, you're like, what's next? What's next? What's next? So I, I don't bog people down with unnecessary details. Okay. I learned something new. ADD. <laughs> it's either ADD, attention deficit disorder, or ADHD, which is attention deficit something disorder. I don't know if it's hyper. I don't know. But there's two. You, you created the sound? No, it's you actually a technical that. medical term that... that it's been around for a little bit. Okay. So I think uh, you're the first person who is uh, talking more deep about uh, the writing and uh, the fiction and uh, uh, talking about uh, romance uh, in between human beings uh, by taking uh, the energy from uh, from uh, the invisible source. Hmm. Interesting. You just haven't maybe run across enough of us. There are a few of us out there. Um, there are two fields of thought when it comes to spiritual. One okay. is New Age, and it doesn't believe in God, and it's more of a universal energy type thing. And I'm not that. I'm I'm on the other school of thought. I believe God gives us gifts, spiritual gifts, and they're ordained by, by him and from him. And so that's how these books are driven, is that we all have gifts that we're given, and these characters just are more in tune with them, and they get to use them. So it's a lot of fun. They're fun. Okay, so how many uh, how many books you have published? Uh, eight, and I'm releasing my ninth next year. So all the nine books are interconnected. Uh, four are interconnected. The first four are the forgiveness series, and they're all about broken people that have had really bad tragedies in their life. But the premise is, even the worst of us with a changed heart has a chance to earn redemption and to learn to forgive one another for things we've done to one another. So the forgiveness series are the first four. Then I have a standalone book called Second Chances, and it's just a, a novella. It's a shorter novel. And then the spiritual gift series, which you see behind me, that's the next four interconnected connected now and a fourth that will be releasing in 2021 that will be also interconnected. But I write them all to stand alone. So anybody could go pick one of them and it still stands alone as a book. But it's best to read them in order, but you're not going to get lost if you don't read them in order. Does that make sense? Okay, I got you. Yeah. So what uh, uh, what set of people can connect with uh, the series of books? I'm yes. sorry, what? What set of people can uh, connect with uh, your books? Mostly the kind of readers I get are the ones that are a little more tender hearted, maybe. Um, even some of the more analytical ones still have been fans of mine. I get a mixture of men and women. Believe it or not, men read my books. I think they're closet readers, though, because they don't want to admit that they have a romantic side to them. One of my neighbors, he's like, do you have any more of your books you're getting re-released? Because he likes to read them as they come out. And he's like, don't tell anyone. But it helps him relate to women because he wants to know how women think. So I would say about 40 percent of them, okay. surprisingly enough. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's interesting because I have a different voice. I'm not your sappy, gooey, ooey gooey, sweet romance. I'm I'm a clean romance with a little bit of sweet and a more saucy and sassy than anything else. Oh my god. I think you're more into romance. Yeah. 
because everything we do is about love, whether we're loving our neighbor and helping them on, you know, when especially with COVID in the world that we live in today, how can we help someone that's loving them, right? Helping them with their food or their needs or if they're out of a job, you know, giving them a little bit extra groceries if you have it. Every part of our lives is about love. So everybody can connect to that. So how can you be so loved and uh, how can you love people and how can you have a uh, uh, love imagination and romantic uh, imagination with romance? Which Because means God you loves- to write, which means yeah, you God- to put in all, all, your, all your books. It's all about my faith. God loves me and, and I have an obligation to love others. He calls me to it. So that's bottom line. But why He's only given- you? Why only you? Everybody. Not everybody. It's not just me. Everybody yeah. has a chance to choose that. Some people don't. Some people do. And it's okay. their choice. It's no judgment. But, uh, rough... yeah. but you're very good. But uh, you didn't use a single swear word. I, I really respect, uh, uh, you know, what you did. Oh, thank you. I think you can have a conversation and get down to the meat of somebody's, uh, to the meat of a conversation without using those types of things. I, I don't judge anyone that does. If they want to swear, good on you. That's fine. Um, it's just not the way I was raised. So I'm not to say that I have it in my life, but it's a choice, right? So what is, what is, yeah, you're right. So what is the response that you got for the books uh, that uh, you released, the eight books? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Your background cut out. What is the response that you got uh, for the books that you released, uh, the all the eight books? So it's a mixture. Not every book is for every person, right? Some people will okay. love it. And they'll leave a great review. I have a lot of five star reviews. And then on the same day, I'll get a one star review because a pastor will read it and say, well, she used the word hell. And I just can't get behind someone that used the word hell. And they'll leave me a one star review. Well, hell is an actual place in my world. Some people believe in it. Some people don't. Um, and I did use it as a swear word in that one book that he was talking about. So there, there's your one swear word. Sorry. Sorry to okay. ruin your image of me. Um, But the response overall has been very, very positive. I have a different voice than most people do because I'm a little quirky, <laughs> a little bit different. And I put a, a different spin on my characters. And so I would say 85 to 95 percent are in that four star range. I get a lot of five stars. Um, I would say I probably get more five stars than I'm giving myself credit for. But I want to be a little more humble here because not, I do get one and two and three stars. Every author does. And I don't mind getting those because it means someone took the time to read it and they had a response. And that's what it's all about. And not everybody's going to like it. But most people do. So what is the thing? Uh, uh, what are the things that uh, people can find in book uh, and uh, that uh, that they cannot find in any other books in the world? Um, I've traveled a lot, so I tend to pull from the cultures I've been around and I integrate that into my characters, whether it's a little bit of my time in Okinawa or Asia, whether it's a little bit of my time in Hawaii, whether it's a little bit of my time on the East Coast, which is a whole different animal, the people there than somebody on the West Coast. I flesh out my characters in a way to where, and I obviously talk with my hands a lot, sorry. I flesh okay. out my characters in a way that I think make them real. I've been told that I have a gift for putting people into the shoes of the readers or into the shoes of the characters so that when they're done, they're like, I'm not ready to give these characters up. I've heard that plenty of times where readers will email me and say, I'm not ready. Please tell me there's another one. I can't give these characters up, which led to the series. So That's why I just kept writing them. So in your books, uh, your character speaks uh, the story or uh, the author speaks the story? That is you. I think as authors, we put a little bit of ourselves in everything we do. We have to. The, the saying, write what you know, have you ever said, have you ever heard that? Yeah. So you have to start there because you have to write what you know. And then you have to expand outside yourself and learn and grow as a person to grow as a writer. But all of us put a little bit of ourselves in there. And if anyone tells you different, I think they're fooling themselves. We don't ever write about real people. We don't ever write about um, anybody's real name. Heaven forbid that would be a lawsuit. But I think we pull from our experiences and the people we've been around and even listening to people's conversations at restaurants going, ooh, that'd be a great story idea, right? I mean, we, we all are flies on the walls. Um, 
and the, and the story of life to learn and to make sure that we can catalog those things in our brain for future use. This, this uh, explanation is very good, but uh, I didn't got the answer for the question that I asked. In your books, you are narrating the story or uh, the characters oh. in the book? Uh, yeah. Okay, sorry. The, yeah. I didn't understand. Yes, it's it's told from the character's point of view. So it's not a uh, first point of view. It's not me narrating. It's actually the characters guiding the story. Okay. So are you a full-time writer? No, I actually have a full-time job, a part-time job, a business on the side. I write, and I also help people with their writing. So I have about four or five jobs. Wow. It's a so starving you're... artist. <laughs> nice. So you are from? I forgot to ask. I live in Oklahoma City. I'm from everywhere. I I haven't lived anywhere. As far as moving here to go to college in Oklahoma, I've been here since 1990. But growing up, I moved every two to three years of my, li- my life with my dad's duty stations. And so most of my time was spent in Oriental, in the Orient or in Asia. And so I feel a connection with um, the Japanese culture just because I was raised in Hawaii and spent a lot of time in Japan. And so that's where I have a bond and where I feel like I'm from. But I was also, I also spent a lot of time on the East Coast in Northern Virginia. So I have another bond there as well. So as a military brat, we're gypsies. We, we travel everywhere and we're from everywhere. So what is the book uh, that is coming into uh, 2020, 2021 and uh, what is the name of the book? It's called Interlaced Souls. And it is t- I'm in the middle of writing it, so I don't know if I'll do it justice by telling you what it's about. But um, it's a character from the Spiritual Gift series. She's a secondary small character that really wasn't mentioned much in the books. But I loved her enough that I thought she deserved her own story. And her name is Bonnie. And she's an empath which is somebody who's so empathetic instead of being sympathetic where you feel like, I'm sorry, you feel that way, you know, you care for them. An empathetic person really feels what that person feels, um, really takes on that person's emotions. And there are different levels of being empathetic. Uh, I, I'm an em- empathetic person to people's plight because I want to help them. But Bonnie is an empath to the point to where she can feel somebody's pain in the pit of her soul. And so she meets her love interest in a bar one night by sensing him, not even seeing him. And so that's how that story starts. So what is love to you personally? Love to me, God is love personally, Um, taking that and sharing that with the world and making sure that, you know, I'm serving people's needs by God, family, myself and, you know, the world. I have to take care of myself in order to take care of other people, right? But I do it in a humble manner. I don't think I'm all that because I'm not. I'm just a person. But I have to love myself in order to make sure that I'm I'm sustainable, that I can make sure that I take care of my family and the people around me. Does that make sense? Nice. I understood you. But I'm last. It's God, family, you know, myself, and then everyone else. So you have lived on this planet for a long time. So what is the effect that you created and uh, that you love most? My son and my husband. Um, my son is the joy of my life. We were told, my husband and I were told we would never have children. And it was a, a heartbreak because I grew up thinking I never wanted to get married. I just thought I'd be a sugar mama and, and have a young thing on the side. That was just <laughs> me growing up because I just, um, I just didn't expect to be that person. I never dreamed about getting married. I didn't, even though I'm a romance author, okay, this is totally not right. I'm a romance author, but I never was that person growing up. And then I met my husband and he's a funny guy. He's hilarious. And he he snuck into my heart before I even knew it. He makes me laugh. He's every day he brings me joy. And when we were told we couldn't have children, I was devastated. I just thought I didn't even know that was something I wanted in my life. And then when I was told I couldn't have it, it was the worst pain ever. And I went home and I opened the Bible and I just randomly opened it. The story of Sarah popped out. And if you're not familiar with the story of Sarah, it's a 90 year old barren woman that's lived her whole life without children. And God blessed her with a child. And as I was praying and I just randomly looked at the Bible, that story was there. And I'm like, all right, God, if you can get a 90 year old woman pregnant, that's barren. You can certainly get a 30 year old healthy woman pregnant. Within a week, we found out we were pregnant. 
So it was just kind of one of those things where he blessed us with a child because of faith. And man, he's he's the light of my life. My kid is he'll be 18 in March. And that tells you how old I am. I'm going to I'm going to be uh, telling my age if you do the math. Um, but he's a great kid. He wasn't supposed to be that healthy because of my physical my physical problems. Uh, they expected him to have problems physically because I couldn't have children. So they kept an eye on me and him when he was in um in utero in my in my in me but he came out perfectly healthy and he is off the charts wicked smart man he's so smart blows me away that kid's gonna go like cure cancer or something one day so before asking one more question i let me uh switch on my wi-fi uh, so that the connection will be more good sure yeah <laughs> what is the effect uh, that uh, people i mean how uh, what is the effect uh, that uh, people got uh, from you or uh, from uh, your books uh, since the day uh, you was here on this planet i'm an encourager and so there's a lot of that in my books and people just gain a message of hope that's the bottom line there's just hope no matter how bad your life gets no matter what we've been going through and heck we've been through so freaking much in 2020, right? It's been crazy. We've all seen people die. I have loved ones who have passed. Um we we all know someone who knows someone who's passed or is struggling or on the verge of death. Uh our income has been dram- dramatically affected when it comes to jobs going away. Um we all know to struggle, all of us, especially this year, right? We're all in it together and and everybody says that, but it's true. We all are suffering the same plight in this world. in this year and my books give people hope because there is still hope no matter how bad it gets that there's light at the end of the tunnel and that we have a purpose on this world and that things don't always have to end up our way and they don't always go our way but we can choose to, how we react to it and who we are and still do good for people so you're connecting uh, human beings uh, uh, act uh, with uh, something uh, uh, with uh, invisible uh, energy and you're connecting it and you're explaining it uh, in your book so is there anything that uh, which affects you uh, physically or mentally that uh, you never told to anybody not that i've never told anybody um i'm an open book man I I'll tell you everything that's happened to me. It's just I'm I've been compared to a a, a water faucet or a fire hydrant because I'm just full steam. Um but I am a product of uh date rape. I not the product of I have been date raped. I uh, thought I was pregnant at the age of 15. Thank the good Lord I wasn't, but always wondered what would my life be like if I'd had that child. And that's how I started writing. The first book I wrote, Finding Kylie, is the story of that child. um it's the mother and the daughter in that scenario if the child had lived and so that is that is something that not a lot of people know but i'm happy to share it with you you get influenced or you influence people um do you are you asking if i cleanse people you influence people or uh, you get influenced by people i influence people and i get influenced by people i think it's important to have both If we are constantly in that influencer mode, we never grow as a person. So we have to be open to opportunities to choose how we are influenced. Does that make sense? Okay, I got you. Yeah. So why only you're connecting with men with the medium called romance? Actually, um there are a couple of other genres that I I romance sometimes as a small theme through my books. It's not like some of them it's the big theme. Uh I have family saga. I have, you know, I've got action adventure, but they all have a little bit of romance in it just because I think without it I'm not interested in reading it. And so I I want to write what I'm interested in reading. And not every book is for everyone. So the people that find it love it, great. The people that don't want to read my books, that's okay too. So at last do you have anything to say to the world and who watches this video uh, about your books and about yourself and any good words at the end just if you start with my books start with the spiritual gift series um you know when you start school or university as a first time student compared to when you graduate you've 
you start as a new person and you don't know much, right? And then you graduate and you become a whole different student. It's the same with writing. And so while I love my first books, I've elevated, I've elevated the writing since then and I've learned a lot as far as writing since then over the last 11, 12 years. And so the spiritual gift series are the ones I'm most proud of just because I think that they're the most put together. And as far as lasting words, man, just, just have hope in this world. Um, just be kind to one another. And if you see someone that's having a bad day, just give them a smile. I mean, it's sometimes just a smile and looking someone in the eyes can make the difference and can make a huge difference in a person's life. So I'll put all your books, uh, uh, book links uh, in this video. People who find, who watches this video can find your books. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And I really, I've watched some of your videos. I got to tell you, I really enjoy it. I've watched uh, there was a French writer that I watched. There was a girl from Texas. And I was like, yay, Texas, because that's, you know, that's our neighbor. Um, although I'm from Oklahoma, I still I was born in Texas. And then I watched um, a gentleman from England. And I enjoy all the questions that you ask. You're a very good listener. Um, you have really good questions. So just thank you for what you're doing. So as a, as a deep thinker, you know, as a of eight books and uh, as an experienced person, uh, what do you uh, what do you think about the video series that I'm doing? Yeah, and that's what I just said was I, I think that you're doing a great job. I love that you're bringing the attention to books from authors all over the world and writers all over the world. I think it's really neat that you're you've got this common thread and you're weaving it through the entire globe, finding people that have a, a similar love. I think it's awesome. So I think I'm good because you said because you have huge knowledge you saying this so I think I'm doing good you're doing great I really appreciate your time today can I put this video on my YouTube channel and on internet on social media with your permission yeah go for it yeah thank you thank you so much for giving me your valuable time and uh, explaining me about your bugs and explaining about you and uh, giving answers to my questions you're very welcome. Thank you for your time today, Sai. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, I'll meet uh, you again after uh, your book uh, uh, re uh, published or released in 2021. Perfect. Have a good night. Yeah, take care. Bye. Bye.